All right, so we're about to head out on a road trip in the Tesla Model 3. Now, this video is going to be a little bit different than the road trip video we did before on the channel. This is going to be all about doing a road trip with autopilot. So we're currently at Emerald Isle Beach. We're heading back to Raleigh, North Carolina, and this will be a video entirely on the autopilot experience for a road trip. So let's go ahead and hit the road. So we are turning on to Interstate I-40 right now, and this this is what autopilot is really made for, is coming onto an on-ramp like this, speeding up to speed, and then engaging autopilot and letting the car do its thing, and you're just having the car drive itself and monitoring what the car is doing. So this is the environment that autopilot has really been designed for at least the way autopilot works today. Now the speed is currently 70 so I'm just going to tap this little stock right here. I'm going to tap it twice. That'll engage autopilot. Notice that it knows the speed is set to uh, the speed limit is 70. I typically like to go about five miles over the speed limit which usually doesn't attract too many uh, police officers attention. And there we go. We are now on autopilot. I'm monitoring what the car is doing but the car is driving itself. So just like autopilot in an aircraft, the pilot always has to pay attention to what the aircraft is doing, but the aircraft is doing most of the flying. Just like here, the car is doing all of the driving right now. I'm not doing anything. I can take my hands off the wheel if I want to. Although if you do that too much, the car will uh, give you a little prompt saying, hey, put your hand back on the wheel, just so it knows that you're paying attention to what it's doing. All right, so we've been driving for a little bit now, and first impressions of doing a road trip in a Model 3 versus doing a road trip in a Model 3 with autopilot are, I mean, I've used autopilot just driving to work every day short distances, but for long distances, I mean, it really does make you feel less taxing. You obviously still have to pay attention to everything that the car is doing, but the fact that it can match the speed of the car in front of you, it'll automatically tell you when to get in and out of the passing lane. It just makes the drive so much less taxing and more enjoyable. I, mean, I can totally see how people can feel more comfortable taking much longer road trips with autopilot than I would normally take if I was just driving and trying to keep the car in between the lines for like five, six, seven hours at a time without any rest period. Um, so, and I love this feature where it will automatically go oh. up. <laughs> That's why I always want to pay attention. Um, sometimes with the car, I don't have it on the fastest setting where it'll do a lane change. So it'll see a car coming up behind us. And this is something that Consumer Reports also said when they tested out autopilot a couple months ago. The car will like, I can't tell if it can see the car coming up behind us, but it, it'll like just hesitate and not actually move you over. Also, this guy is either texting while driving or just a bad driver. He's in the passing lane. The speed is 70 and he's going 67 miles an hour. All right, now one of my favorite features of autopilot on road trips is typically, even if you're not using full autopilot, but you're using the traffic where cruise control and you're going on a highway that like this, where there's no concrete barrier or anything and there's cross traffic here. So obviously you have to be paying attention, but there's variable speed as well. So the nicest features is let's say we were just on a road that was 45 miles per hour. It just went to 55 miles per hour. All I have to do is hit my finger on the speed limit sign on the car and then the car will automatically accelerate to my preset speed limit which is six miles over the speed limit to 61 miles per hour. So that's a pretty nifty feature that makes just driving on these types of roads when you're not in a highway environment where you're using full autopilot, uh, this type of feature makes this type of driving really nice. All right, so we finally did make it to the beach and now it's time to go over a few closing thoughts I have on using Tesla Autopilot on road trips. Now one question I do get a lot is does navigate on autopilot, which you currently have to have the full self-driving package to get, does that make a huge difference in using autopilot, especially in a situation like a road trip? Well, for me, not really because a lot of the times where 
navigate on autopilot will have the car go on an off ramp off the highway it still feels a little bit jerky and not as solid as it needs to be in order for passengers who just aren't used to the car driving itself to really feel comfortable so typically when i'm on a road trip i'm usually traveling with other people i just disengage autopilot when i need to take an off ramp just because of my experience of using autopilot every day i do know that depending on the on ramp ramp it can be a little bit jerky or it can seem to take that turn kind of suddenly so I typically don't use that feature of navigate on autopilot another question I always get about autopilot and especially on long journeys like road trips something that a lot of people think about is is autopilot unsafe and my answer to that is no Autopilot is a tool and as long as you pay attention to what it's doing at all times, it's actually a very useful tool to use when driving. Where people get into trouble is when they think that autopilot is capable of doing more than it actually can. They put too much trust into the system and that's where accidents and unfortunately even fatal accidents can occur. As long as you know what the current capabilities of the autopilot system are and that you need to pay attention to everything around your car and how your car is driving just as you normally would when you're actually driving the car and the computer's not driving the car, then you're going to be fine using autopilot for a road trip. If you're in the market for a Tesla, definitely make sure you use a referral code when you order your car. Referral codes typically get you free supercharging credits. Tesla has been playing around with the number of credits you get when you use a referral code. So definitely click a referral code and you'll be able to see the current offer. You can use our referral code in the description below, your friends, neighbors, or whomever. Just make sure you use a referral code when you order a Tesla. If you don't, you're leaving free supercharging credits on the table. Well, that's it for our video on using autopilot on a road trip. Now we are going to be doing a six months later review of Tesla's autopilot system later this year. So be on the lookout for that. If you like this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel to see more Tesla videos like this one. Thanks again for watching. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder.